What's up guys, I'm Tyler McCormick of Reversion Raceworks, and if you don't know me, I'm a mechanical engineer with a background in manufacturing. On top of that, I worked in the 3D printing industry as an applications engineer working with industrial machines, and now I run a 3D print farm in the automotive aftermarket. But who cares about that? I think you're using the wrong nozzle on your 3D printer. By the end of this video, you're gonna know what nozzle to use, how fast to run these machines, and what you can do to make your machine a little more reliable. And you better stick around till the end because we have an exciting announcement for you. When it comes to nozzles, there's a lot to choose from, so let's go over some of our favorite options. So here we have three different nozzles with three fairly different applications. They look a little different, they're all different colors for one, and one's brass. So the other two are a hardened steel, this is the E3D line of obsidian nozzles and it's the E3D Revo line. It's what we use for all of our CR 10 S5s, and uh, we love them. They're very easy to change. There's a lot of benefits, but I want to focus less on the specific nozzle and more on the materials, the size, and make it more of like a universal type application here. So the first one's the red one, which means a 0.4 nozzle, which is pretty much the industry standard when it comes to nozzle sizes and what pretty much every machine comes with. And in my opinion, I never use them. The next one is the blue one, which is the 0.6 hardened steel nozzle. To us, this is our bread and butter. It's a good mix between print quality, speed, strength, and anything else you could name. So to us, that's our go-to. And last but not least is the green one, or the 0.8 nozzle. Still a great option, but you have some more print issues as you go larger with oozing and whatnot, so you lose a little bit of detail, it's a little bit messier, but when you're doing those big jobs, this one really comes in handy. So it definitely still has a place in our toolbox. That was my quick overview of these three, but let's get a little more detail on them. So let's take things back to the first one, the .4 brass, and the number one problem to me is the fact that it's brass, and that's because most of what we do here is composite-based filaments, and if you're using carbon fiber, glass fiber, or anything in between, it's going to wear out this soft metal very quickly. On top of that, with a .4 nozzle, I'm sure you could see, this thing is tiny. I know they make smaller nozzles, but I wouldn't even consider using something smaller than that. If you want high detail, you should be looking at resin printing or something different in my opinion. When it comes to these, I feel like you're just asking for a clog. Uh, you could always run lower layer heights at bigger nozzles and whatnot, so for us, this just doesn't really make sense. Even if this were a hardened steel nozzle, I'm just not willing to risk the clogs and run our machines faster than we need to. At the end of the day, I don't want to just be talking smack about the brass nozzle. They do have their use case, and really what it comes down to is better thermal conductivity. And what the heck does that mean? When it comes to the steel nozzles, they're not as good controlling the temperature, so if you're not doing abrasive materials, like you're just running PLA, normal PETG, normal nylons, the brass is going to be totally fine for you. Will it wear out? Eventually. But it'll take a while to do that, and it'll have better heat control. So if you're not running carbon fiber or fiberglass, this is still a pretty good option to go with. Up next is our favorite one, the 0.6 hardened steel nozzle. This is the best mixture between high detail, strength, and overall print quality and speed, where you don't have to run the machine super fast to try to compensate for a smaller nozzle, but you also don't lose all the detail you would with a huge nozzle. And with the 0.6, you could still run, say, like a 0.2 layer height. We like to be around 0.35 to get that mixture between speed, strength, and just a good-looking part. So to us, this is kind of your jack-of-all-trades. It really checks a lot of boxes for us, and I would recommend most people use that nozzle. Last but not least is the 0.8 nozzle. This one has gotten us out of trouble plenty of times because it'll obviously print way faster than any of the other nozzles when you've got a hole this big of plastic just shooting out of it. My favorite use case is mold making. We often use this on our Modix Big Meter because that's just a huge machine, so anything we can do to cut down time is going to save our day. We've also used it on the S5s and whatnot, but we really don't use it too much in a production sense just because I feel the layers are a little too big and you lose a lot of aesthetics. But if you're just trying to make as many parts as strong as possible, as big as possible, this is a great option and I heavily recommend it for mold making. You may or may not have noticed these parts in the background of the video and these are one of our more common products that we make 
all the time for you guys. It is the SM95 Mustang Pro Dash Holley 686 mount. And we made it with the .4 nozzle as well as the .6 nozzle. And there are some differences. This one obviously is a little bit higher detailed, but in my opinion, for the hassle it takes to go through and get a good part of these, I don't think it's worth it. I think you're much better off going with a larger nozzle, sacrificing a very small amount of detail and getting a faster, more consistent, easier part to make. And I intentionally left this little blob here because in my experience, when you're using a .4 nozzle, that's way more common. Where with this one, like sure, you get a little less detail on the face. You can see the layer lines a little bit more. The part itself is so much smoother. It does print faster and you get way less nozzle clogging. So to me, this is the clear winner. I think that's enough pros and cons when it comes to these two parts. How about we jump to the computer and show you guys some slicer settings so we can talk about real numbers and how we achieve these two different results. All right, well, here's where the magic happens. For our CR10S5s, we use Cura as our main slicer, and this is the part we were just talking about, the SN95 Mustang Dash. So this is how it would look in the prepared phase, but then we go over to the preview, and you can look at it layer by layer, and we print these fully solid. You can see it's just a completely solid plastic part. We're not doing any infill in these, and that's kind of crazy that this is 21 hours to print. It would just really suck to have to redo this. But this is when we're using the 0.4 nozzle. So this is the slowest this part would possibly be with our current printer. 0.4 nozzle, it's just gonna take a really long time to print a part of this size, especially on a machine that size. All right, now with those settings changed, we're gonna hit slice. And let's see what happens with the 0.6 nozzle settings. And you're right at 10 hours, which is a massive difference. I get it, I get it. It is a long time still, but from a production stance, that makes it a lot easier for us to at least be making one part a day. But I just wanna show you, this is a fully solid part. And just by running the same feed, same speeds, just changing the nozzle in this case, cut the part time in half. When you're talking about diminishing returns, I really don't feel like you're getting that much more quality. I mean, it is gonna be a weaker part with the 0.4 nozzle. It may look better, debatably, but do you really want it to take twice as long to complete? In my opinion, it's just not worth it. So that's why we run 0.6 over 0.4. All right, let's backtrack just a little bit. I have a pretty good rule of thumb that I like to follow with any 3D printer I really use. And that's when it comes to layer height, you want to take the diameter of the nozzle and do 60% of that. And then when it comes to the layer width, again, you take the diameter of that nozzle and do 120% of that. So when it comes to the 0.4 nozzle, you're going to be doing a 0.24 height and a 0.48 width. So that's where you see here, you're getting multiple layers to create this 100 thou wall on this part. And where a lot of your time is coming from is how many layers it takes to make this part fully solid because it's so much finer. Now let's change things back to the 0.6 settings. And you'll see right here, it's taking less walls to complete the wall of this part, which is obviously going to speed it up quite a bit because you're affording that thicker layer line to go around the part. And then on top of that, you come down here and compare how thick the bottom is. It's the same thickness, but you're able to accomplish it in less layers. You might be asking now, what settings do you use for the 0.6 nozzle? The settings we use are slightly different than that, but we're using 0.35 for the layer height and 0.72 for the layer width on our 0.6 nozzles. So it's just about that rule of thumb. You can vary from it a little bit, but it'll get you pretty dang close to really good settings for your printer. Now I get it, those old CR10s are pretty slow. And some of you might be wondering, why are we even talking about these old primitive machines when there's Core XY machines out there, like the K2, the Bamboos, and all these other printers that are on the market now. And I get it. We just got our Creality K2, and you could check out our unboxing video that we did a couple weeks ago. So there are some considerations that need to be had, and one of the main ones right off the bat 
is you have to rotate the part to even get it to fit. So let's make it just like how we did it in the time lapse. And if you look up top, this thing just barely fits on this bed. So I'm gonna set this one up with the 0.4 nozzle first as well. And we have it set up with the same exact material. And you're gonna be kind of surprised what even a small nozzle will do on one of these more modern machines. It's gonna take four hours and 30 minutes to print on the K2 Plus. And that's because your speeds are radically different. Your walls are getting made at around like 180, 120 millimeters per second. Where on the CR10s, we run them things about 25, 30 millimeters per second. And that's largely because of just how heavy that bed is. That said alone, just upgrading your printer, you're gonna get way faster part. But that's not to be said that going to a larger nozzle, even on a fast machine, there's still benefits to be had. Like I've said time and time again, you're gonna make a stronger part you're gonna have less blemishes, even on one of these machines. There's a couple other things that really impact speed on a printer like this, because when you're talking about the CR10, you're largely limited by the design of the machine, and less the fact of how fast plastic can melt. The difference with these Core XY machines is that they are so rigid, and their design is so much better for making these 3D printed parts that you're no longer speed limited by what the machine is capable of because you can make them run 400 millimeters a second and make this part in probably an hour, but it would probably look like hell. One really big thing to consider here, if you jump into your plastics settings, is the maximum volumetric speed. And there are tests you can do and calibrations you can run to figure that out. I don't wanna jump too deep into the nitty gritty of that but when you figure out your machine's maximum volumetric speed, I personally like to dial that back as well by say 15 to 20%. So that means on this machine, you're looking at about 19 millimeters per second as your maximum volumetric speed with the uh, PETG and the 0.4 nozzle. So for us, four and a half hours is a great improvement because you're now less than half the speed of what the 0.6 was on our bigger machines. And I like to limit that flow as well because if you ran it up to say 19 millimeters per second for your vol max volumetric speed, you'd be closer to that 200 millimeter per second as it's printing the walls and whatnot. And maybe the printer is capable of doing that, but I think it's just unnecessary wear on stretching the belts, wear on the bearings, and just everything else. I think you're more likely to have layer shift because the motors can overheat. So having that built-in factor of safety of running it, say 20% slower than what it's really capable of, I think will increase a lot of longevity to your machine. Now let's jump into the 0.6 nozzle. And in this case, on this printer, I made different profiles for the same material, just different nozzles because there are differences. So let's regenerate the part. And you'll see here, we're down to three hours and 57 minutes. Isn't as radical of a change as you might have imagined. Now we're up to 19 millimeters per second for your volumetric speed. So sure, maybe it's only a half hour quicker, which doesn't sound all that impressive. But what is impressive is that you're running the walls at a slower speed. You're just a little bit lower on that, like around 100 millimeters a second, 110. Not the biggest difference, but where you're really getting a gain here is one, less wear on your machine again, and two, you're going to have a stronger part with less likelihood of jamming, clogging, and whatnot. Now you might be wondering, how do I know the right feeds and speeds and whatnot for my printer, whether it's a Creality K2 where they have this slicer that has a lot of it figured out for you, or maybe you have an old Ender 3 or CR 10 S5 or something in between like we have in our print farm. Let's get rid of the part here. And if you go into the calibrations, all of these are coming from Orca Slicer. So just because you don't have a Creality machine and you, don't, you can't use Creality print or whatnot, that doesn't mean you don't have access to these calibrations to build out super precise profiles for your specific machine, for your specific material, your specific extruder and nozzle setup. So more to what I was saying before about maximum flow rates, this test is a really good one for that. 
So let's switch it over to the preview and you'll see here, the color is showing you a variable flow rate from between about 15 to 30 millimeters a second. As it's going through the print, it's going to be gradually ramping up that flow rate. And then you can examine the part and just see, is it starting to skip things? Is it starting to look weird? That's going to tell you where the printer's maximum flow capabilities really are. Whatever that maximum flow is, dial it back by at least 15%. Because I just love throwing factors of safety on everything because then you know for sure the printer is capable of doing it. And one thing I wish I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video is having a temperature tower. That is something that is going to be really important to making sure you're running your printer at the correct temperatures for the correct material. So this one was just for PLA. It really doesn't matter much for this uh, just comparison. And if we go over to the preview section and uh, you could see here that I have tree supports on when I'm not supposed to. And let's change it so we could look at temperature. So you'll see here, each one of these little parts of the model is representing a different temperature. Creality Print makes this really easy, but you could also pre like self-program this yourself on another machine. You really just look at this and see what part printed the best, what overhang looks good, what looks bad. And then as an added test, I like to take a pair of pliers and try to snap them and see what your layer bonding looks like at that temperature. Now, you guys might be wondering, why am I wearing a different shirt? That's because we had a great outro filmed and done and everything ready to roll for today, and the mic didn't record anything. It's kind of ironic that we had some technical difficulties and the surprise we had for the end of this video deals with technical difficulties and that's going to be our new discord server where what happens when you're 3d printing 3d scanning reverse engineering trying to make all these badass car parts for your wacky project that no one could even think of it's technical difficulties so that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish with this discord server where we're building a community where it's gonna be us, the reversion crew, not just myself, where we're all in there answering questions, dealing with your projects, going over how we would go about whatever aspect of the build you're in. And not only that, let's just talk cars. We're trying to make this a cool space and build something that'll be very beneficial for the community. So check it out, hit the link down below. Maybe Nick will throw this thing on the screen somewhere. I don't know how he does this shit, but that's besides the point. Join our Discord. Let's build cool stuff together. I hope this video helped you out with something in your 3D printing journey, and there's plenty more to come. Stay tuned.